Welcome, Ben Mama. This video is sponsored by A Compendium of MSX Games Volume 1 by Kieran Hawken and Amazon POD. This book takes you through the life of the MSX computers, looking at a varied cross-section of the 4,000 plus games available, with a review and screenshot of each one. It's not a list of the best games, a list of the worst games, or indeed a complete guide to what's available. It's a meandering journey through the MSX library from the earliest titles released back in 1983 to modern homebrews and even some dodgy Asian bootlegs. A compendium of MSX Games Volume 1 is available worldwide and features reviews for over 300 games, developer interviews, fascinating facts and trivia, important history, technical details and personal stories that really help bring the book to life, and so much more besides. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to Amazon and grab yourself a copy, and if you want to know more, then check out the link in the description. Almost a year ago to the day, I did a video looking at the greatest MSX games of all time, as voted for by you. And when I did that video, I had a real issue with people including MSX2 games in their choices, and some of them got quite upset by my stipulation that only MSX1 games could be included. I tried to explain to them that this was because I always intended to do a similar list looking at the greatest games to the upgraded version of the hardware that first hit the market in 1985, but this didn't seem to make too much difference. If you do want to know more about the MSX2 and what improvements it had over the MSX1, then check out my MSX2 Amazing Facts video linked down in the description. And lo and behold, when I ran the voting for this video, I had the reverse problem of people wanting to include MSX1 games in their lists, much to my frustration, but here we are. As with previous Greatest of All Time videos, I put the big question to the members of several large retro gaming groups on Facebook, including the hugely popular and very lively Retro Gaming Hysteria, link in the description for those who want to join, as well as my own loyal subscribers, asking them to name their top 5 and the reasons why. Following the same rules as before, I awarded 5 points to your first choice, 4 points to second, and so on and so forth. I then counted up those votes to decide the final placings. In the case of games having the same number of points, I then went to the number of votes awarded, followed by the number of first place votes to decide the final rankings. However, I didn't actually need to use these tiebreakers much until I reached the wider top 40, which, as always, will be available as a Patreon exclusive video at the start of next month. Now, in terms of the interesting observations I made during the voting process, there isn't really that much of note. All the games I expected to make the list did, and ranked roughly where I expected them to, although I did think a different game would win. But the one thing I did pick up on that really pleased me was the huge amount of votes for homebrew games, far more than I've had in any other Greatest of All Time poll. And it just shows the passion that is present in the modern day MSX community. Not just that though, these new games not only featured heavily in the wider top 40, but also managed to break into the top 22 as you'll shortly see. So with that revelation, it's probably time to get on with the show as I proudly present the 20 greatest MSX2 games of all time. Para algunos, un ordenador familiar es así, o así, o así. Para Sony, un ordenador familiar es así, sencillo, práctico y útil, para ordenar, estudiar, trabajar, jugar y para aprender juntos toda la familia. Los ordenadores Hitbit son compatibles MSX y pueden crecer. Es un Sony. Probably better known for its later Sega Master System and Game Gear ports, Psychic World is a cute run and gun style game with some pretty unique features, particularly the way you obtain and use power ups, that makes it some interesting gameplay mechanics. The only game Konami ever released that makes use of the more advanced MSX2 Plus specification, F1 Spirit 3D Special, is the sequel to the excellent MSX1 game of a similar name, 
but drops the classic top-down view for a much more realistic behind-the-car perspective. For me, Bubble Bobble is one of the greatest platform games ever, especially from a multiplayer perspective, and the MSX2 version stays remarkably accurate to the original arcade game, making it one of the best MSX2 titles out there to play with a friend. Subtitled Drassel Family, this fourth instalment in the popular Japanese action RPG series, the MSX2 version is a huge upgrade on the alternative MSX1 and Nintendo NES iterations, with much improved visuals, extra gameplay features, and amazing music by Yuzo Koshiro. The first Dexter game was a huge hit on the MSX1, so it's hardly a surprise to see a sequel was released to the upgraded machines. This game is basically more of the same, with a host of subtle gameplay improvements alongside the much improved graphics and sound you'd expect. One of the biggest problems with the original MSX computers was their lack of hardware scrolling. This feature was finally added to the range with the release of the MSX2 Plus machines, and now people are busy fixing classic games like Nemesis 3 to take full advantage of it. Another sequel to a hugely popular MSX1 game, Penguin Kun Wars 2, is pretty much just more of the same, with a wide variety of different animals competing in a crazy dodgeball tournament. This is certainly no bad thing though, as the game is such a ridiculous amount of fun. As soon as you see the compile name, you know you're in for a treat, and it doesn't get much better than the Aleste franchise, which really proved its worth on the MSX before moving across to a host of other platforms. This is a vertically scrolling shooter of the highest quality. had the enhanced version of Nemesis 3 with the scrolling fix for the MSX2, and now it's the turn of Nemesis 2. But it's also worth noting that these enhanced versions of the Nemesis games don't just fix the scrolling, they vastly improve the colours used too. Dead Line might just look like another take on the classic one-man army genre made popular by games like Commando and Akari Warriors, but it's actually so much more than that, as as well as the new fantasy theme, it also introduces a host of RPG-like elements too.
One of my personal favourites for the MSX2, this game is known as Hinotori in Japan and is often compared to Konami's original Nightmare game. But it's the branching paths that make this one unique, and thanks to an English translation, this can now be enjoyed by everyone. Also known under the original Japanese title of Yuri Kun, but since translated into English by the MSX community, Mr. Ghost is the true definition of a hidden gem, with its unique gameplay and impressive presentation. This is one of the best reasons to own an MSX2. Often overshadowed by the similar vampire killer, The Treasure of Usas is also a platform style arcade adventure, but one focused on two different heroes, known simply as Wit and Kles, who you must constantly switch between in order to make it through the game. It's pretty well known that the Metal Gear franchise debuted on the MSX with an NES port following, but it's not so well known that the MSX also got its very own exclusive sequel in the form of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake as an alternative to the vastly inferior NES game Snake's Revenge. Nightmare is rightly regarded as one of the very best MSX1 games of all time. Indeed, it was the runner-up in that very poll. But the jerky scrolling was always a big disappointment, and this new homebrew MSX2 port fixes that issue and adds a ton of more new features too. I don't think I need to tell you that Vampire Killer is the original name for the legendary Konami franchise Castlevania, and I probably don't need to tell the MSX fans watching that this version is superior to its more well-known NES-based sibling too, but I did anyway. convinced that this game would claim the number one spot as the MSX2's most famous highly regarded exclusive. But in the end it had to settle for a still pretty respectable fourth place. Space Mambo is undoubtedly the best horizontal shoot -em up available on the computer. Snatcher has long been one of Konami's most legendary games, but the big problem with Hideo Kojima's cyberpunk adventure has always been the lack of English language versions. That's since been fixed with the awesome English translation of this super deformed version. As the name obviously suggests, this is the sequel to the first Celeste game, but what's interesting is that there are actually two alternative sequels to the game on the MSX2. This amazing title, and Aleste Gaiden, which takes place in an alternative timeline. The 
These days, Metal Gear is better known as an NES game, and a lot of people seem to forget that the franchise originally debuted on the MSX2. And this version is vastly superior to the alternative Nintendo one too, which is probably why you voted it as the greatest MSX2 game of all time. Panasonic. And that rounds up my look at the 20 greatest MSX2 games of all time. But which games were you most surprised to see not make the final list? Or are there any games you don't think were worthy of inclusion in this countdown? I always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comment section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons and YouTube backers for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following people in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Paul Daniel, Mins, Dos Gamerman, Luke MC, Carl Olsen, Seth Robinson, Frosty, Mark Strickland, Klimatorn, Trolltor the Burninator, Daniel Skronsky, Ben P. Stein, Tabakit Soon, David Maddox, Rise of Bleeding, Joe Kassara, Classic Gamer 74, Bernard Santu, Peter Grantham, No Man, Josh Hartman, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to host extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.